mercy and pardon. I confess to Almighty God. And you, God of mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting.
showered me the holy city. He showed me the holy city coming down out of heaven. The second reading, a reading from the book of Revelations, chapter 21, verses 14, verses 10 to 14, then 22 to 23. In the spirit, the angel carried me away. In the spirit, the angel carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, his radiance like a most rare jewel, like a just like a jasper, like a crystal. It had a great it had a great a high wall with twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and on the gates the names of the twelve tribes of the sons of Israel were inscribed. On the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. And on the west, three gates. And the walls of the city and the twelve foundations. And on the walls of the city had twelve foundations, and on them the twelve names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city had no need of the sun or moon to shine upon it, for the glory of God is its light, and its Lamb is the Lamb. This is the word of the Lord. Let's stand up and I'll come to us. take place, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to Lord Jesus Christ.
Laudato Si letter from Pope Francis, paragraph 23, 26, 165, and 13. The climate is a common good, belonging to all and meant for all at a global level. It's a complex system linked to many of the essential conditions for human life. A very solid scientific consensus indicates that we are presently witnessing a disturbing warming of the climatic system. Humanity is called to recognize the need for changes of lifestyle, production and consumption in order to combat this warming to at least human causes which produce or aggravate aggravated. The problem is aggravated by a mode of development based on on the intensive use of fossil fuels, which is at the heart of the worldwide energy system. There's an urgent need to develop policies so that in the next few years, the emission of carbon dioxide and other highly polluting gases can be drastically reduced. For example, substituting for fossil fuels and developing sources of rene renewable energy. We know that technology, based on the use of highly polluting fossil fuels, especially coal, but also oil, uh, to a lesser degree, gas, needs to be progressively replaced without delay. Until greater progress is made in developing world widely accessible sources of renewable energy, it is legitimate to choose the less harmful alternative or to find short-term solutions. Humanity has the ability to work together in building our common home. Here, I want to recognize, encourage, and thank all those striving in countless ways to guarantee the protection of the home which we share. A particular appreciation is owed to those who tirelessly seek to resolve the tragic effect, effects of environmental degradation on the lives of the world's poorest. Young people demand, who demand for, climate, for, for change, they wonder how anyone can claim to be building a better future without thinking of the environment, the environmental crisis, and the sufferings of the excluded from the data The human person, Adam and Eve, and in his image and likeness, and therefore all that God created was good. It first starts with you and me, the care of ourselves, spiritually because you need to care for yourself spiritually that's when you can understand the need and the importance of what God has gifted us with that's around us and then it cuts across all religions Buddhists Muslims and all that we need to care for ourselves because we are God's crown of creation, in His image and likeness. That's where health comes in. Do we have equitable health for every nation, for every people? Do our governments care about the health of its population so that they can access medicines, treatment, and all that? You all know. So before we even think of the environment, our basic needs, our basic services, food, shelter, and all that. Not until the human person addresses these, then it will be easier now to participate in stewardship of what God has created and put around us. Otherwise it becomes difficult. That's why with all these issues of climate change and globalization and all that, the Western powers and Western nations are looked down on us, poor African countries. They have all their resources, the standard of living and everything. But as long as you have not yet addressed the needs of the poor world, of the developing world, we'll just be joking about climate change and cutting down carbon emissions and all that. So it's holistic. That's why we are here as a church. The church is so gifted with its wisdom because all that we have to do with climate 
God has already given it to us in scriptures. And uh, as we come here, gathered here as men and women, regardless of our religious affiliations, we are here to uphold the dignity of this world, the way God gave it to us. And we are supposed to be responsible stewards to care for it. Yesterday I was watching uh, African Voices on CNN on a very beautiful documentary on a, a tribe in Cameroon. The tribe lives by the river. I don't know the name of the river. And uh, that river has lots of mangroves. And these mangrove forests that are in the rivers are like a breather system for the water. All the wastes and all that that is choking the river. These plants are supposed to breathe that filter that. But these mangroves are choked with bottles, with what, whatever comes from the city gets in there. And these, these are a gentleman who uh, is trying to, he got into an initiative to save the mangrove uh, forests along the rivers being choked with plastic bottles, waste, and all that. And uh, he started uh, an initiative whereby, <clears throat> besides uh, that, that river, people use it for traditional sports. Uh, I don't know how they call it. People get in boats and then you row and you compete. Uh, there is a special name for that. So it's a traditional sport for that tribe. So they make their canoes every year. They have that festival. People line up. Then they race on the river to the other side. And all that. So this young man started uh, uh, an initiative whereby he put the young people, the young kids, high school, primary school, and training them that tradition of racing, boat racing with canoes, but also they have spare time to roll their boats into the mangrove forests, picking plastic wastes and all that. So they're creating that awareness. At first people are like, these guys are crazy. Then the community was touched by that. And now they're getting aware that, you know, if you have a plastic bottle, you're taking a cork, you're taking a Pepsi, whatever. This is how you should dump it. So it has attracted attention of other organizations. And they came over to see they are sponsoring the sports, but also trying to see ways in which this uh, collection of wastes from the mangroves can be eased. Because they told me the gentleman was explained that it would take them uh, uh, takes them an hour to clear the mangrove forest wastes. But if they have machines and better equipment, it will take about 20 minutes. So that's what I saw, initiatives from almost simple people like that. And you and me, what initiatives are we making in terms of our, uh, caring for the environment, for our home, for our surroundings? I went home. It's about four years. I went home, wherever we shifted to live, it's a village deep. There are no trees, and you know, Gulu is very hot. No trees completely. We had my Thanksgiving in a bush and all that stuff. So I told myself, I want to turn this place into an oasis. I don't have the money, and I'm going to use nature. All I needed was fuel and plants. So for the last four years, I make trips home, planting trees surrounding all the borders of the land, and all the flowers, palms, and what. And the villagers looked like it was like kind of a, are we crazy? It was new to them. These people burn fuel all the way from ginger. They come here, walking under the scorching sun planting trees and all that. It was crazy for them. But you know, they grew up. They don't plant trees. 
people are cutting down lots of indigenous trees in the north for chapel. Some of them are going to be in danger. We won't see them for years. So I started that initiative like that in the village. And I think there are over 550 trees that I have planted. But of course, environmentally friendly trees are areas for season and the rest. And give it 10 years, there will be lots of bats, monkeys, all kinds of uh, plant life in that place. And uh, that is me in my own simplicity. So the next thing I resolve whenever I'm going home, I'll carry 50 trees. Then I move to each homestead, distribute for free, because I realize they would even steal some of the trees we plant their food. Mm. You know, they also want to go and plant. So, so to create change, you need to also involve the community. That's something I came to know. So I'll be getting home, distribute trees in homesteads, and make sure you plant when I'm seeing like that. And uh, let's, in our communities, let's open up these uh, initiatives, especially we religious avenues uh, for creating the environmental awareness, you know what, the schools, the apostolates we administer in, and also lay people, people of God. There are various ways you can influence society. You may be living in this urban area and you have nowhere to plant a tree. But still, what are you doing in your ancestral place? What are you doing to create awareness within the communities? So all these are ways in which we can do something in our simple ways. We pray in the sacrifice of us, but the Spirit may guide us to be one in ways of how we can care one thought, one mind, one heart, to ensure that we safeguard this uh, environment for future generations who are coming up to us. The Lord be with you. Amen. Of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all the ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not man, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and began when our Savior was crucified and the washes He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in awareness with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the King of our life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. We are present before you, Lord, covered here on this sixth Sunday of Easter. We continue to pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, the other bishops. May the Lord continue to inspire them with his wisdom and the gift of the Holy Spirit as they shepherd the church in love and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, We pray for our leaders, our leaders all over the world, especially in the Western world. May the Lord grant them that wisdom to govern with equality by looking at justice, peace, and tolerance as ways of making the world progress. 
Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for those who are undergoing various sufferings of illnesses, of sickness, people, those who are terminally ill, and many other people who experience pain because of physical frailty. May the Lord restore them in good health. May the Lord be a source of consolation to them. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious hear us. And for all of us who are present here, may the Lord continue to help us, walk with us, give us his gift of the Spirit so that it gives us wisdom, understanding and know him deeply in this journey of our Christian life. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious hear us. We pray for this uh, beautiful community for being a very good host for this important event. May the Lord bless them. Bless them in their ministry. Bless them in the work they do. May you bless the first ones who are here in the journey of formation. And may this be a community of love, peace, and filled with graces. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious hear us. Let us take a moment of silence and offer to the Lord our words. God the Father, hear our prayer. Hear us, Holy Son, and Holy Spirit, hear our prayer. Mercy for your people, Lord. We make our prayer to Christ our Lord. Amen. and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation of all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of all to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <laughs> sending down your spirit upon them like they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we are for you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Charles Martin, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph Haspaus, with the blessed apostles, with St. Peter, Julian, Amad, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we have to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, love of thee and me, your kingdom come, your will be made of us as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass in us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. We graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace with joy and with love.
uh, from Africa to Latin America to Asia and the Americas, and of course right here in Virginia. We are very, we are very lucky to be the first foot to host an event for the Siwa week. So, all Nakuaredo to buy a Nimi Seno, Ga Chicho Sembayo for a Missam no, who are Mitty Munkisa, Mitty Jet Joe Simba, Edo, in a home somewhere dealing with a Miso, Wanga, Gawa Tulide, and the Pope Francis at Cobham Balua Jet One, the Kiranti. I've been to Binja Vaido. Every day, say to come better. I see. I have a money of Gaza or Kubidong was a Mune, please join me to, to say thank you to uh, Reverend Father Barry and uh, Reverend Father Dennis for uh, leading us in this Eucharistic celebration. I was trying not to tell you to clap, but you just did, so thank you so much. <laughs> so thank you so much, Father Barry and Father, and Father, Father Dennis. So we're going to have to bless these trees and each one of us today is going to go back home with the tree because hey, why not, yeah? Let's go plant these trees and like our brothers and like, and like we learn on Wednesday, our brothers in the Islamic faith say that, I forget the word, the one of the blessings that the Lord will always give you is uh, from uh, planting trees and we're going to have this dialogue on Wednesday. And I want to invite you after this celebration, I know Sister Ian Harry, after this celebration to have a small, a small, uh, a small meal that Father Barry and Father Dennis have prepared for us. And from there we shall have more conversations. But for now, I want to say thank you so much for coming to, uh, to this Eucharistic celebration, and most especially Father, for leading us to this Eucharistic celebration. Because now more than ever, we need to speak up and act, stand up, because we are experiencing, each and every single one of us is experiencing climate change. Some of us need worst point, and we have to do everything in our power to see if we can reverse that. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Father, please let us pray. As we wait for Father Jesus' is bringing water,
raise the trees higher than us. Yeah. yeah. We are launching a campaign, right? Yes. By the next summer, by that we get them cut on to nine by next summer. See, we have a minute the cola. We have some some right. some bites. Mm -hmm. Then maybe we can have a conversation after that. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, uh, to have it in the If we could just uh, so just uh, I think uh, everyone take goes takes their seat. Yeah. Then from there they can pick place. Yes. Okay. Good deserving table. Well, you are so on, you are in, no? So just go so on. Just go on. Pick, pick a seat. Yeah, pick a seat and find your plate and go and get some. Yeah.